and welcome to the Revere Veterans and Community Show. Today I have a special guest. He's a professor of economics at Boston College. His name is Father Richard McGowan. Welcome to the show. Mr. Nice to meet you, Morris. How are you? Now, Father McGowan, I understand you had quite a bit to do when the casino first came into fruition. Could you explain that to us, sir? Well, I was asked by the city of Boston to estimate what, kind, what, 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 what they could expect to be uh, revenue, uh, what would be the economic impact on East Boston, and Revere, obviously, because there was going to be the original, the original Caesars uh, proposal. When Caesars got turned down by the Gaming Commission, and obviously, uh, you know. May I ask you why they got turned down, sir? Well, it's interesting because now a lot of people in the industry, remember now Caesars is now su suing the, the, the Gaming Commission of chairman, Mr. Crosby. And the rationale for the reason why they, they got turned down was that they're, 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 it looked like in Macau that, and other places that they had some, some, they got some loans or people who, who, who had some contact with Caesar had some underworld connections. It's, it's, but it was really pretty nebulous. And so, uh, and then when it came out that, 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 that Mr. Crosby had uh, connections with the people who are selling the land to, to win in Everett, uh, it does look like you do wonder why Caesars was, was denied like the, the, conflict, the, of the conflict of interest, when it looks like Mr. Crosby has just as much of a conflict of interest. Right, now with the casino, since East Boston dropped out, that means the casino is going to go totally to Revere. Yes. How is that going to affect economically the surrounding communities? Well, I would, I would. One thing is clearly for Revere, you're going to get a lot more traffic. It, it, so the way the plan, it, the, the original plan for, that Caesars had, had people mostly coming in through through an entrance from East Boston into Suffolk Downs. Now you'll still be coming in, but it's just the exit. From uh, the, from Revere in the Suffolk down, so it's you'll one thing it's going to one thing it's going to change in the plan is the fact that all the traffic is going to be going it's mostly. I mean, it, it, Revere is Route 16 is going it, what they're going to do with Route 16 is going to be rather interesting. So that's that's the, or and some of the other access roads 1A and and, and but there there's a there's a plan to build a, a, a pass over. For, uh, for the people from Winthrop, so coming through 1A that way, you'd be over, you'd be taking an overpass over 145. So the people in Winthrop would just be able to, actually, they're kind of happy about that. They'll never, th that big traffic jam that you usually get on 1A, 145, that will be broken down. But, you know, it's certainly Revere, the whole building is going to be in Revere. So now all the stables and everything that are, that are in Revere for, for Suffolk down, they're going to be moving over to East Boston. And so they, remember, the, the plan is to keep the track open. Uh, and 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 clearly that the, you know the speaker of the house is really interested in that, and so so are the people the the, the whole Suffolk Downs people. They want to keep the track open. So that means th another thing is that the, the stables and everything will be moved to the other side. Well, they won't be eliminated at all. I mean, no, no, no. The, the, in other words, the track is one of the plans here is to keep the track open. Right. I know a few people that do work at Suffolk Downs, and they have horses there and their race horses. They were worried about the staples going out of Revere. But what you say is they're just going to... Well, they're going to be going on to East Boston. So, I mean, you know, that's, that, that's kind of curious that you're, in East Boston you're going to have staples or horses. But, well, it'll be... Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the new mayor of Boston is exactly overwhelmed. I mean, that's not going to be the revenue producer that the, that the casino would have been. But they'll still get money out of it. Right. Uh, I guess that would be because they want to put the whole casino in Revere. Revere. And the racing. Remember, the original plan would have had the entire casino in, in Boston, in East Boston. Boston, right. And Revere would have kept all the, what, you, Revere would have gotten money as a, as a, as a neighboring community, plus more, hopefully the, the, the racetrack will do a lot, lot better, so that would have kept the stables and everything a lot more busy. Um, We'll see. I mean, right. that's something that's going to be down the road. We have one of the best mayors in the Commonwealth, if not the best mayor in the Commonwealth, Dan Rizzo. And he's gone after the casino hook, line, and sinker. And he told the people, or he's telling the people, that the money coming in, the revenue coming in here, would help with schools, traffic, security, education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any idea how? That's well, again, I mean, as a host community, you, you'll, you'll obviously you're going you'll get the lion's shares of of, of 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 the revenue. 
there'll be there'll be neighboring communities that'll also get some money. So believe it or not, if Revere happens to win the the, the battle between Revere and Everett, who's going to get the casino? Everett still would get some money because they'd be a, they'd be a neighboring community. What about East Boston? Even though East voted? Boston would still get money, they most certainly would. Would that be all the adjacent towns around yes, the area? Yes, it was. It should be the adjacent towns. Now I think it's kind of humorous when Cambridge right now is putting right. it, is putting in uh, a bid. I frankly I have a feeling the commission is going to kind of say we don't really think we're, you're going to be impacted that much. So I mean. Again, a lot of this is going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. And I, and I can't help but also think that the courts eventually are going to get involved. And this is the same thing that's happening, according to this, out of Northampton to Springfield, which are 20 miles apart. If one gets the casino, the other one wants to get the same share. Well, and they're not going to get the same share, but they're going to get some money. So everybody, look, every town around right now smells money. Right. And so, yeah, Revere will certainly get will certainly get more money than the other towns, but everybody's going to get their little share. And and please, let's not forget who's going to get the lion's share. It's called the state government. More uh, than Revere? Oh, the state government's going to get a lot, lot more than Revere. <laughs> a lot, lot, lot more than Revere. Now, remember, the state ta the, the state government is, is the one that they'll and they'll divvy it up from there. Right, but you know, I read an article, and maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong on that. Like. Everett, if they do get the casino, only has 2,800 jobs allotted for the casino. We have 4,000 jobs allotted well, for Well, a lot of that's because of the track. I mean, because of the track being, being kept open and things like that. So you know, obviously, and there, there's the interesting thing. If Everett gets the casino, you can, you can pretty much be assured that Suffolk Downs is not going to make it. Exactly. So there goes all those jobs. Um, now, I'm sure the Suffolk Downs people Think they might be able to make a go, but I you know, I have a feeling that will that will be the the death knell for that, and um, so so some of the reasons why you have more, more let's face it a racetrack creates a lot more jobs than a casino because you have to train the horses you have to have trainers you have to have feeders you have to have the whole the whole thing uh, and then even by the way you talk about a town long but remember most of the ho the horse farms are up in Hamilton and up and around that in the North Shore so all if Suffolk Downs eventually closed all that land would be open right you know I'm, I'm glad you mentioned what you just said father because I know people who race horses at Suffolk Downs they went to Florida to Hialeah they're racing their horses down there and they're worried about the casino I mean about the racetrack going out of business over here. So it really does depend on the casino coming to Revere. Yes, now. it does. But I mean, um, but that's not what the Gaming Commission has to take. The Gaming Commission is going to say, what's the best site for casino gambling? And that, 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 that's going to be, that's. If the Gaming Commission is going to say, what is the best site, there's no way Revere can lose because we have the airport, we have the subway station, we have the bus, we have the water. Well, he can, might even build a, a wharf out there to bring people in by boat. Well, that was that, that was one of the plans that Caesar had that they were going to expand it on the East Boston side. Uh, and again, I, it, it's uh, you know, the both plans are it, it, it's it's going to be fascinating to see how the how the how the commission decides which one of these plans is the best. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I think both plans have their their strengths and their weaknesses, and it, it's it's going to be very it, how they decide. In fact, I think. I kind of I kind of chuckled that one of the one of the subcommittees is called the Wow Factor, and it's the chairman, Mr. Crosby, is the one who's in, he's going to he, what's the Wow Factor in the casino, and you know, I I would imagine Mr. Wynn will always win the Wow Factor because he you know he that's what he does. Uh, whether or not he'll keep on reinvesting in the in the, in the casino is going to be interesting too. I mean th there's so many factors that go into this and it's 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 going to be it's going to be rather interesting to see how they how they how they how they go through the mix of it. I met Mr. Crosby at the convention and if you're out there Mr. Crosby watching this we'd love to have you come on our Revere Veterans and Community show. He's a fine gentleman. Now there were five of People sitting down were on the gaming commission, I right. believe, at the table. Does it have to be a unanimous vote or no. just a majority? Oh, it'll, it'll, it'll probably be a majority. Oh, I would imagine there'll be a. Sp I think it's just a majority. No, it's, it's not going to be unanimous. It does, oh, it doesn't have. It to doesn't have to be unanimous. It might be, but you uh, matter. No, no, but I mean. Uh, no, it's just a majority. Okay, uh, uh, those people that are on the commission. Did they themselves, some of them, work in casinos too? That's one of the interesting things about this commission. None of them have. 
I know them. I know them. Know the industry. Which makes it good. Which makes it really bad. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. You do have to know that this industry is a rather interesting industry, and it 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 does behoove you to decide. One of the things that I find interesting in all the plans, no one of the, either Mohegan Sun nor, nor um, Steve Wynn have said how much they're going to reinvest in the future. And that, the, that casino has to be, no matter wh whoever wins it, it's going, to have to be re it's going to have to be refurbished, redone every couple of years. And so uh, I think that's one of the, for instance, there's a, there's a debate now, and I, I actually do probably agree with the commit. Right now, if you win over $600, you're going to have to fill out paperwork. To pay taxes you know, on it. To pay taxes. That will be the death. I mean, you, you, that is, you're not going to, that's not the way to run a casino. I mean, all the other states around here are at least $1,200. So you have to do that. I mean, it, I don't know who put that in, that provision in, but it, 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 hits, it, hits, it hits me as being fine. Then all you're going to do is get, you're just going to get small rollers, period. And even somebody, can you imagine, winning $600 on a slot machine is not winning all that much money now. I mean, and so it, it sounds funny to say that, but it's true. And well, so, true. and then for you to sit there and have to pull two or three pages of paperwork after you win the money, people are not going to be too pleased. Well, you can give a phony name with a phony address, too. I don't think you can, not with an IRS agent. And, and the, the, well, they're the, right there, too. Oh, they right? sure are. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, all right. No, I don't think there'll be any phony. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Now, the other thing I was going to ask you, sir, if I may. When they fill out the papers, like you just said, will the taxes be taken out right up there and then? or Right then and there. Also, in other words, if they win 600 and they got to pay 20%, yeah, 120% right, right, right out the door. Right out the door. Which is the correct way to do it. That's the way to do it. Right. The federal government gets 28 percent. 28 percent. So gift tax. It, 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 you know, there. well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, yeah, plus where you put, yeah, 600 dollars only. It's, it's a nice. Uh, please don't give me. I'm not belittling no, no. winning 600 dollars, but when you think about it, it's not. It's not. It's not going to change anybody's life. I can tell you. That's true. What about people that are addicted to gambling? Do, do some of the casinos have, like, I know in the <coughs> Las Vegas, they have what they call photograph uh, pictures of them and they ha see them coming in through the door and if they sh match your face a bell goes off and they won't let you in is that going to be the same around them? yeah i mean there's there's, there's some there's there's um is additional funds going to be used for the compulsive gaming commit uh, and, I, and i i i'm on that board uh, ironically that for instance, the, the state lottery, I mean, they have little signs saying if you have a problem gambling, but they, I mean, the amount of money that the state gives for, for compulsive gambling is outrageously small. The one thing I will say about the casino thing is there, I think it's 1.5% or 2% of the revenue is going to be used to help people with, with compulsive gambling problems. Yeah. yeah. By the way, when you, have a, when, when you make gambling more uh, uh, available, the number of people who are going to be problem gamblers is going to go up. And so, yeah, you are, and you'll probably have, I think, there's a, usually an inc there's usually an increase in bankruptcies, divorce rates, uh, and even drunk driving. And so that's another, there, there are some very different, there are some very, very definite social costs that have to be taken into account. And, and when, and the other interesting thing is, and your mayor is going to find this out. Yeah, the revenue is going to come in really great at first, and then it's going to start leveling off. And so if you think you're going to be spending at a certain level and that's always going to be increasing, it's not going to happen, which is why I made that previous comment, is that you have to keep on the property, the casino properties have to keep be constantly improved and, and updated because otherwise people won't, won't come. You know, uh, some people... When I was at the convention, there was only four people that were out there that were against it. But we have some of them revered that are against it, too. But I don't see why they should be bothered, because the money coming in will build up the roads, will build up the school system, will build up the police or fire department. And I think that would be good, because uh, let me say, take the fire department, for instance. More money coming in, more fire trucks, more firemen, more EMTs. Somebody is sick and needs an EMT right away? Well, but the, some of those EMTs are also going to have to be used at the casino. And so that, there's an interesting thing. Suppose, suppose there are a lot more, 
uh, people that, remember, you're going to have to provide ambulance services and everything for the casino. That's going to be their job, not ours. Oh, that's, you know, it, ask what happened in, in Ledger's, Connecticut, when they went, ba that town went bankrupt when Fox went about and that. So, well, I mean, so there's one of the, the city's going to have to be very, well, and I'm sure your mayor is right on top of it, but he's going to be very, very careful about what preserves, what what services are going to be provided, how they're going to be paid for, uh, things like that. So, I mean, yeah, you you can afford more EMTs and fire trucks, but they're probably going to be also going to be used, at least the, especially the EMTs are going to be used a lot in the casino. So, um, they're, they're, and then the other social costs that I've told you, I mean, so there, there are other, you just can't just look at the revenue. There's there's other there are other costs involved in this, right. and and I'm looking and, at the human cost, father. Oh yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, how do you? And that's one of the problems. I mean, how do, how do you how do you calculate the cost of a divorce when somebody gets addicted to gambling and, and the couple gets divorced? I don't know how you. I really don't know how you. But that but there's a real cost there. And um, now, admittedly, I will also say, you know, mo the, most of the problem gamblers aren't going to come from Revere proper. They're going to be you're, 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 so. It's, it's what we call externalities as economists. In other words, the neighboring communities are also going to be paying. I mean, they're, they're, and obviously, one of the things you're trying to do here is get um, all the people who are now currently going to Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun. You're trying to you're trying to get them to come back here. And so, in that sense, the state is actually the state's paying for people who get addicted down there. Now that they come back here, you're saying you're picking up some of that cost. So it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to try to figure out what the exact cost and what the exact benefits are of gambling. Right, Father, here's another thing up here. If Revere does get the casino with Mohegan, the money that would normally have gone to another, uh, like let's say Caesars or Wynn hmm. or someone else, would have, wouldn't have gone to Mohegan. This way it's a win-win situation for both of us. Mohegan keeps the money that the people from yeah. Massachusetts would have gone to Connecticut. They give it to Mohegan right here. Mohegan gets the people from Maine, New Hampshire. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I mean, and I think uh, that that's going to be an interesting characteristic in all seriousness. I mean, one of the things here is you could think of it as for well, Mohegan, people that every like during the summer, if they wanted to go play golf and things like that, they could they could use the same card that they're using here at Revere. They, then they get around to Mohegan Sun, and or if they want this to get away, or people during the winter and everything, when people don't feel like going down to Connecticut, more and more people will come here. So in a way, that's what we would call economies of scale. And and and, uh, but I think there one of the dangers here is would they would they send people down. For instance, there's a euphemism in the, in the industry called the whales, the big hitters. Would Mohegan Sun say, well, we really want most of the whales to go down? When you say big hitters, you, I mean people who are spending two or three thousand, I mean, we'll say a thousand dollars a bet on a, a blackjack wow. table. Okay. I mean, they're called the whales. Okay, thank you. And, you know, and that's what I mean by the industry. I mean, in other words, clearly, if you look at, at Wynn's idea, he wants to get that type of, he wants more, he wants the big hitters and everything. Uh, I'm not saying Mohegan Sun doesn't want the big hitters here. I think, I think Mohegan Sun probably is much more of a regional casino the way they were, where they're setting it up, which is probably more realistic. I mean, Wynn's trying to set up this thing where people are gonna be wa the wow factor. And we'll see. I mean, they're very different visions actually in certain ways about what, what, the, what, what, what long term is gonna happen. You know, I like what you said, Rod, according to between Wynn and Mohican. Mohican would be more like the people's casino, while we would be more at the high class casino. Yeah, it, I, you know, it, that's probably over the dump. Uh, but well, yeah, I would probably say that's, that's, that certainly Wynn's model is more that way. He, you know, he, he likes to build. And when he's out in Vegas, that's what he's done. He always builds the thing that, wow. What's just the name of his casino, Vegas? Oh, he's now one, the Wynn. There's one at the very end of the strip. And, that, and it's, and again, it's, remember, he, he uh, he's an interesting guy because he's built things and then it would, would become like the state of the art and then he sells it off to somebody else and then he builds another new big thing. Right. Uh, the one where he got burnt a little bit in Macau, he didn't outdo, uh, it's interesting, he, um, 
the other big name is, by the way, is another Massachusetts resident, Sheldon Allison, uh, who owns the Sands. And um, now that's very interesting. He wasn't interested in all doing anything in Massachusetts. Yep. And, 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 and so that, but he outdid Wynn there. I mean, they, you know, and then Wynn never got a license to build anything in Singapore, and, and Sands did. And so that was another big thing. If I if I'm correct, I believe Wynn wanted to build a casino before he started whatever in Foxborough. Yes, he did. And what happened in that? Well, I mean, there's the classic case of why why certain cities are for it, and the people where Wynn had this idea that he was going right next to to uh, Patriot Place, you know, where, right, where the stadium where there, the stadium and all of the big shops and everything else there that, that the Crafts had built. He wanted to, and Kraft invited him to say, let's build the big casino there. So it was going to be this Taj Mahal casino right next to the Patriots and all this other stuff. The people of Foxborough said, no way. In other words, I think for them, they already said, look, all the, every time we have a football game or you have a concert in this thing, you know, Route 1 gets tied up. The last thing we want, those people didn't think they needed at all a casino, and they weren't interested in having a casino. And, 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 you, and that's happened in a couple of locations here. Uh, so clearly here, the towns and cities that, that are approving it are cities and towns that say, look, we, we want, we want the, the possibility of economic development from a casino. Or there are other towns and cities that say, no way. You know, like, for instance, Milford said, no way. And so there, it's, um, and that's the other curious thing, by the way, is it's, you know, it's the last poll was, it was around almost 70% of the population in Massachusetts said they, they had no problem with casino gambling. And yet almost 50, over 50% said only, but I don't want to build in my town. In my backyard. In other words, it's, M I, you know, be, I don't want it in my backyard. I don't mind going, I would like to go to a casino, but I don't want it anywhere near me. And so clearly, I mean, it does hit you that the towns and cities that are going to approve it are the towns and cities who say, yeah, we do want it. And, you know, so look where it's out, out west. It's in Springfield, which is, a t which is a pretty poor town. Here are two more things that I heard. Number one, why East Boston voted against the casino, and I hope maybe I, they weren't correct in saying this. They said that the religious institution, and I mean all religious institution, out of that bunch, were worried about the money being taken away because some of them played bingo in the churches or mm. synagogues or mosques. I don't know if they played it. Do they gamble in the mosque, Father? Uh, that I don't no, know. No, they do not. That's, uh, that's an absolute no-no for Muslims. That's an Muslims. absolute no-no. No. There's no gambling. See, even I learned something new. No, that's a no-no for <laughs> Muslims. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that, sir. So in other words, they were worried that the revenue would be taken away from them going to the casino. Was that one of the factors that made East Boston go? Yeah, but I think it also the religious leaders there were, were saying that they thought that you know that that, that this casino was going to pr prey primarily on the poor, and that the, that's the last thing that East Boston needed. Now, you know, I mean, clearly, I th you know, it's funny you just mentioned in, in a Muslim. For instance, there is a casino in Cairo, Egypt. To get in it, by the way, you have to have a foreign passport. Oh, okay. Okay, so clearly, a, a, a casino is successful when you can bring outside people. You don't want the to locals. Cannibal, the, you want a few locals, but that's the last thing you want. You don't want the locals going. You want people coming from all over the place, right. and that's why, that's why transportation is so important. And how people are going to get in and out and things like that. And so, uh, that's the really important issues you have to look at there. Before we close, Father, you said something to me, and I wish you would explain it to the people of Revere, that most of the businesses, especially the restaurants, because when you're in the casino, you don't want to go out of the casino, do you? But you said some of them... Well, I mean, they, at least uh, I remember the previous proposal, and I think this is still going to be true with Mohegan Sun. They will invite local restaurants to open up a facility inside the casino. And so, uh, now again, I... I, 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 I haven't seen the, the full Mohegan proposal, but at least I remember the, the previous Caesar proposal, which I can't imagine Mohegan hasn't you know, piggybacked a little bit on. In their proposal, they, they were going to offer most of the, the restaurants in East Boston were going to be given the opportunity to open up a, a place in, inside the casino. And so you know, that, that would have been, you know. So again, I mean, I think there, there's probably some 
pretty good Italian restaurants in Revere and things like that. So they all they, I could uh, name a dozen of them, but there's one right across the street. From well, well, where we are. all right. And so they would be given the opportunity to say, all right, do you want to open up a a, 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 a restaurant in the casino? Now, admittedly, the rent's going to be a little higher, so that's that's going to be. So you mean no, the, the rent will be. Well, I would imagine the rent's going to be, you know, I, you know, you, when they say open it up, it's not going to be for. They're going to have to pay rent for the for the space and everything. And the other problem for the men is, let's face it, you're going to have a whole different location. So, you know, getting supplies and cooks and everything into the second location might might not more be more jobs. Easier. More jobs. It could be more jobs. Yeah. Okay. It certainly could be more jobs. Okay, Father, we got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Wrap it up and. Well, I mean, I think it, thank you for the opportunity to talk my about honor, you not know. Yours, mine. Uh, you know, let me get, since you're the Revere resident here, let me ask you a question. Why is the, why do you think it's such a great idea for Revere? I think, me personally, yeah. I think it's a very good thing for Revere. It would help out education. It would help build up youth centers to get the kids off the street, reduce the crime rate. It would bring money in to put camera surveillance. I know a lot of people say Big Brother's watching you, but it's because of the cameras we catch the criminals, like the Zanaya brothers of the Boston bombing. It was cameras that caught them by individuals. Not the, so they would be good. Fire, police. Okay. But you're also going to have additional social costs. So, I mean, right. hopefully you're going to take that into account. Traffic coming in, lots of traffic. Yep. The more traffic, yep. more business. Yep. Okay, it could help. We'll see. I mean, I, it, it'll be very interesting to see what the economic effect will be. And, you know, but from, I guess, from, the, from your mayor's point of view, it's worthwhile. I agree with you. And by the way, I'm going to say this to you. I want to thank you for thank coming you. up here. My, my and God pleasure. bless you, Father. Right. God bless you, too. Take thank care you. now. Thank, thank you. you. God bless our citizens of Revere, especially our troops and our great country, the United States of America. Until the next time, I hope we have the greatest guest as we had as Father McGowan here. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming, Father. Take care now.